and you learn through your investigation that Allen was paying up to $50,000 a week to a guy named Curtis Eddie Smith for drugs, right? That's what was told to us, yes. The name Curtis Eddie Smith has been coming up a lot in Alec Murdoch's double murder trial. So who exactly is he? Was he involved in the murder of Paul and Maggie Murdoch, and will he testify? I'm Anjanette Levy, and welcome to Law & Crime's Sidebar Podcast. Curtis Eddie Smith is a name that we all know if we've been following the Murdoch saga. Curtis Eddie Smith is a distant cousin of Alec Murdoch, so everyone calls him Cousin Eddie. Smith is in protective custody at the Lexington County Jail, where the records say he's being held for safekeeping. He faces charges related to that roadside shooting of Alec Murdoch back in September of 2021. This is when Alec Murdoch said he asked Cousin Eddie to shoot him on the side of the road so he would die and his son Buster Murdoch would get $10 million from a life insurance policy. This is what Murdoch's attorneys have said about that incident during the trial. He didn't do it, and I think they will concede he didn't do it to get some sort of sympathy. He did it to be dead. That's why he did it. And unfortunately, Eddie Smith, at four feet, couldn't shoot somebody in the head and kill him. He meant to. And that's what Mr. Smith would say? Mr. Well, <laughs> Mr. Smith has given no less, I'm, I'm set up to cross-examine him, I know this, six different explanations for that and any other event you ask him about, um, from what there to uh, I was there and I, I, I saw Alec, he'd been shot, to um, I was there um, um, and I tried to stop Alec, um, to yes, I shot him in the head. But the, the, the fact of the matter is um, the cross-examination of Mr. Smith is something I'm looking forward to um, now. But this particular um, event had nothing to do with what happened on June 7, other than he lied about something else. Cousin Eddie and Alec Murdoch have known each other for many years. They both face conspiracy charges related to oxycodone, which is an opiate. Eddie Smith also faces charges related to money laundering and trafficking methamphetamine. Alex Murdoch's attorneys have suggested that Smith and a drug gang could have murdered Paul and Maggie Murdoch back on June 7th of 2021. Did he mention to you anything about these cowboys that Mr. Griffins asked you about? No, sir. Did he mention to you anything about a Curtis Edward Smith? No, sir. June 7th he didn't? No, June sir. June 10th he didn't? No, sir. August 11th he didn't? No, sir. When did he ask you about Curtis Edward? Or when did he bring in Curtis Edward Smith into this investigation? He being Alex Murdoch. September 4th, 2021. September 4th, 2021. This is what Curtis Eddie Smith told the Today Show back in 2021 about what happened on the side of the road that day. He standing like this. He said, you going to shoot me? I said, no. He said, we well, just got to do it. And he, he made his move like, like this, you know. And I just grabbed his arm. You, you took the gun. I shoved it behind him between me and him. And it went up. Joining me to discuss Curtis Eddie Smith is his attorney, Amy Zimmerchek. Amy, welcome to Sidebar. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. How is uh, your client, Cousin Eddie? We call him Cousin Eddie, obviously. You call him Eddie. How is he doing right now? Uh, I mean, he's in health-wise, he's still having a lot of health issues. He's very anxious. Um, and quite honestly, he's just not... Um, you know, he's not in a great environment. He's in jail where he's not getting the medications that he needs. Um, he's very frustrated. I'm sure. And he's in protective custody. So essentially that's isolation, right? Absolutely. So he's got no human contact except for with the guards. Right. And when, and when I can get down there. So it's also just really on top of all the anxiety and frustration, then he's got to deal with just the, the sheer loneliness and, and frustration of not being able to talk to anybody. He is under subpoena by the state. So the state did not call him in its case in chief. Could call him in rebuttal, possibly. Uh, the defense has not subpoenaed him. Subpoenaed him. Do you expect the defense to call him? Because Dick Harputlian has said he wants to cross-examine him. Obviously, it's not a cross-examination if he calls him. 
but he could be treated as an adverse witness. Um, I mean, I don't know that he could be treated as an adverse witness just because he's not going to say what Dick wants him to say doesn't necessarily make him an adverse witness. I think he's just a regular witness. And I think that's a problem for the defense. Um, you know, Dick says a lot of things when the cameras are rolling, um, some things that aren't true. Uh, I don't believe that he is looking forward to cross-examining him or even questioning him because he would have called him and maybe he still will, but you know, I, I'm interested in, in Dick producing that statement that he said uh, Eddie confessed to shooting Alec because there's never been a statement where he has confessed to shooting Alec. So, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I'm looking forward to it as much as I'm sure Dick is. <laughs> What, what really, as far as we know, you know, we've seen um, Cousin Eddie say things on the Today Show that, the, the, you know, there was a struggle almost over this gun. It, the gun went off. Is there anything that you can tell us about what he claims happened that day? Unfortunately, um, I can't at this point just because he does um, he does still have a possibility of be, possibility of being called. Um you know, when people are questioned by the police and and then when they get this mindset kind of almost in shock about how they remember things and then they have some time to go back and look at at at, at what really happened as best they can remember. I think that there, you know, there are some changes. There aren't major changes, um, but there are some changes. And uh, I think that is the problem with, with just not having me as his counsel from the beginning, it's been, it's been a little hard to kind of go back and, and play cleanup. Um, but, um, you know, I think that he is definitely finally in a, in a place when he gets to, to tell his, his story and exactly what he remembers and exactly how it went down. I think it'll match the physical evidence and I think it will, um, it'll make a lot more sense. I have so many questions I want to ask you about that. And I know there are so many that you re really can't answer right now, but um, it appears, you know, that he obviously, we can see the photographic evidence. He met Alec Murdoch there on the roadside that day. He, he absolutely did. Something transpired. And then Alec Murdoch suffers some type of wound and, and Eddie takes off. Um, why didn't he stick around? Are you able to tell us that? Well, so I can tell you that um, it's certainly our position that the wound that Alex suffered was from hitting the asphalt with the back of his head, um, that he did not sustain a gunshot wound. Dick likes to wave around these very minor minor pieces of the, of the medical records, and he only wants to put in portions and parts, because what those medical records consistently say is that uh, person, Alec Murdoch, uh, reports. So these are all things that he's reporting, but they, you know, they absolutely don't say there's a gunshot wound. They say that it, it reports to be a gunshot wound. It, you know, it's whatever fits with their narrative at the time. Um, but in my opinion, there was, that is not a gunshot wound. So there's potentially this struggle over a firearm that goes off and Alec right. Murdoch falls backward and hits his head on the ground and you contend that's how he injured himself. It wasn't a gunshot wound. Absolutely. On the asphalt. That's, that's certainly been my position ever since I've been involved in this case. And, and so, but then why does Eddie leave? Well, because he's in fear because this is somebody who has absolutely gone crazy. And, um, in my opinion, I, uh, before Eddie left, I, and fully convinced that Alec planned on killing him on the side of the road. I think that that would have made his life so much easier. The murders could have been solved. He would have said, oh, he was coming to finish off the job or, or whatever. And all of his problems would have gone away. Um, I think that, um, you know, Alec is a, I think that we've seen throughout this trial, he shows many different faces to many different people. And, um, and I think that, that that's frightening. Uh, not only did Eddie leave, but he also, when questioned, immediately brought the sled agents to the place that he threw the gun. I have so many questions for Dick because are you contending that 
Eddie is such a bad shot that he misses from four feet away, yet can sniper kill Paul and Maggie. Um, those two positions don't make sense to me. Also, with regards to the gun, I would love to see the um, the inventory of the guns because that gun that um, Alec had, is that one that he told the police about? Because I didn't see it in the, in the itinerary of all the guns that he had. So I think that the problem is, is that you have someone, Alec Murdoch, incapable of telling the truth and and getting different stories out there that, that suit him. So it's incredibly frustrating on this side of it. What exactly is the relationship between Alec Murdoch, or I guess I should say, what was the relationship? Because we've heard that Alec Murdoch said he represented Eddie Smith at one point in time years back. They obviously developed a relationship. There's some type of distant um, relationship there, distant familial re- relationship. They're both charged with, you know, a narcotics conspiracy. They're accused of that. Curtis Eddie Smith is cashing all these checks from Alec Murdoch. So what's the relationship? So um, I think you kind of outlined them all. I think there's a very distant familial relationship. I think that, um, I mean, but it's very distant. Uh, I'm talking seventh or eighth cousin removed. Um, I think uh, I know that he was a client, that Eddie was a client of Alec Murdoch's. He um, is somebody that owed him a responsibility as a lawyer. Um, I know that Alec uh, requested that Eddie give him some of his pain pills. That's how it started. And then requested more pills of him. There were other people that were giving Alec Murdoch pills. And I think that that's the frustrating part is, you know, when the the public only gets to see ports, uh, portions of, of, of what's going on. I think got to see a little bit of it with Nate Tootin, um talk about cashing checks because that's exactly what Eddie did as well was cash checks um, for Alec and he wasn't arrested. Um, I think that uh, kind of covered all. Eddie was a convenient, he was a convenience for Alec to, to get what he wanted to get done when people call Ellie or when people call Eddie a drug dealer, he's got to be the worst drug dealer in the world because he had one client and that client was Alec Murdoch. But they said he had like the physician's desk reference in his house and stuff like that. And, and I mean, I don't know. Well, I mean, he has a serious, serious back injury and has been prescribed tons of medication and has been going through um, a ton of, of medical treatment. Um, his nurt, his daughter is in the medical field and lived with him. So yes, he probably has a lot of medical references in his house. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he has an alibi. We've discussed this in the past. You said that for the night of the murders, he has an alibi. Alec Murdoch told the police in the roadside shooting interview when asked whether, you know, Eddie Smith was involved in Moselle. He said, no, so you're you're saying that he's got people who can vouch for his alibi the night of the murders. Absolutely. And telephone records and computer records that show he was on his computer at times during the evening that he was at his house. If if they had any if they had any evidence that they could have linked him to this crime, they would have arrested him for. Did Eddie Smith consider Alec Murdoch a friend or was it more of like a business associate? No, absolutely. He thought of him as a, as a very close friend, someone he cared about and trusted and thought that that person cared about and trusted him as well. And now he feels how? Completely betrayed like he doesn't even know who Alec was. Is, or did they talk frequently back then before all of this happened? I mean, not necessarily about, I mean, there was work stuff. So Eddie also um, cleared some land for Alec, you know, so he he's very knowledgeable about big, heavy equipment and how to use it. And so he would clear land for Alex. So any of the conversations that they would have would have to do uh, with Alec, you know, either using him to get drugs or using him to get or to do equipment or to cash checks. It wasn't just like um, call you up and see how your day is doing. Let's check in. It wasn't that kind of relationship. Sure, sure. But they were friendly enough to be considered friends. Absolutely. Uh, 
last week you and I had kind of spoken a little bit by text and you said you were you were at the jail because you were fearful for Eddie's safety. Tell me a little bit more about that. You know, I just people who can't see the power and the control that the Murdochs have had for so many years, it's it's really hard for them to understand. But even um, when he was in the other jail, uh, random inmates were coming up to him, asking him about being Alex's co-defendant and and having knowledge about who he was. And he had never spoken to any of these inmates before. And um, and so he w- we request to have him move because there was so much inquiry coming from Alex Storm. Um trying to find out where Eddie was located, things like that. So we ha- we actually requested that the attorney general move him to a whole nother jail so that there's not an accident or, you know, that nobody can, can somehow gain favor with Alec by hurting him. And even though he is in another jail, it's just, it's very concerning, you know, on the one hand, Vic saying, I can't wait to cross examine him and all of these things. But on the other hand, not even subpoenaing, subpoenaing him to call. And you just never know, exactly what is um, on the minds of the other people that are involved. Well, Amy Zimmercheck, we really appreciate you coming on to talk with us. We hope you'll come back and, uh, you know, we are wishing Eddie the best. Thank you. Thank you. And that's it for this edition of Law & Crime Sidebar Podcast. You can download and listen to Sidebar on Apple, Spotify, Google, and wherever else you get your podcasts. And of course, you can always watch it on Law & Crime's YouTube channel. I'm Anjanette Levy, and we will see you next time. Thank you.